Alrighty guys, a very warm welcome to the video. Today we're going to discuss five key overtraining symptoms that uh, I believe are easy to or easy enough to monitor. They're quite subjective, but they're also objective in the sense that, you know, you really can analyze these things yourself and monitor them on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. How are you going? Uh, what's changing? Uh, and are you dipping into overtraining, whether you're training in any endurance sports, even if it's... Uh, you know, more power or anaerobic sports in the gym, any kind of thing. It's more so relating to endurance because we know the effect that endurance can have on our hormonal system, on our uh, micronutrient stores, etc. So very important things to monitor. Obviously, there are more than this, uh, but I think these are five key things that we can really kind of address and uh, monitor in and of ourselves on a daily basis. So number one, overtraining symptom, lack of motivation and drive to train. So, you know, you have an event coming up or you've been training for a long time and all of a sudden, well, not all of a sudden, but over a period of time, you're just not really caring as much. You kind of don't have that get up and go. Now, motivation is always transient, but the drive to perform and to train is something that you can really monitor. If you just are starting not to care, if you're really kind of a bit blasé about your training, it's like, whatever, like, it, you know, it is what it is. I don't really have that drive, that get up and go. That is a sign of overtraining. It could be a sign or it may well be a sign of overtraining and a sign that you're overdoing it and you're doing too much and you can't recover as well. And the body just needs some rest, some time to recover. So that's number one, lack of motivation and drive to train and even lack of motivation and drive to race. Number two, insomnia and excessive daytime fatigue. So this is very interesting. Why would insomnia be a sign of overtraining you know like if you if you are doing too much training and not recovering enough if anything it makes sense that you would be sleeping really well because your body's trying to recover but there does come a time where you push too far past that red that you know that red line of overtraining whereby you kind of dip into this chronic state of stress and um, high cortisol and you know, high adrenal hormone output, and you just cannot actually, even though you're excessively fatigued during the day, you cannot shut down, you cannot get to sleep, you can't turn off, you can't turn the brain off and just relax. The body's in this kind of fight or flight, sympathetic, high cortisol, high stress, we've overdone it, um, what's going on thing, you know, state. And so that that's why insomnia can result from overtraining. So if you are lacking sleep, or struggling with sleep, I should say, that can be a sign of overtraining. Not always. It's also a sign sometimes of undernutrition in terms of our overall macronutrients. If you're training a lot and you're just not getting those calories in, or well, the body's saying, hey, you know, what's going on? We need to go out, we need to get food, and we're not going to sleep until we do so. So it can be under eating, it can also be overtraining. Both of these uh, symptoms or issues kind of present very similar. The third one is frequent illness or a compromised or poor immune system. This obviously depends between people. You know, some people will vary in, in terms of their susceptibility to sickness. Some people may get sick regularly and that's a normal thing for them. Other people, in terms of just, you know, flu, uh, minor colds and stuff like that, uh, other people may never get sick. If you're getting a lot more sick than your baseline or than you normally would during a winter, or it's summertime and no one's sick around you and you just keep getting sick and run down, that's a sign of overtraining. Why does that occur? Again, it's that hormonal response. It's the fight or flight system, sympathetic uh, nervous system in overdrive. You're doing too much for what the body can handle at that given time. Cortisol is going up, adrenaline's going up. And whilst these things are very uh, protective in the short term, in terms of reducing inflammation, in the long term, they can create inflammation because they essentially downregulate your immune system and they leave you compromised and susceptible to infections, whether it's bacterial, viral, etc. So frequent illness or a compromised immune system and increased susceptibility to sickness is certainly a sign of overtraining uh, and a sign that, you know, maybe we should back things off a little bit. Number four, I've put down as poor libido and or sexual dysfunction. This can also extend to uh, menstrual irregularities in females when we have you know a loss of or a dipping of estrogen uh, and also progesterone 
in males, this can result poor libido as well, again, from reduction in testosterone and estrogen, as testosterone does convert to estrogen as well in men, both very important, but particularly testosterone. And what happens when we're overtraining? Again, it's a stress response for the body. It's too much to handle in and of that time period. And we've got too much sympathetic activation. We've got too much cortisol. And when we look at our hormone and our hormone balance, essentially our cortisol is like catabolic stress, uh, runaway, fight or flight. Uh, testosterone and the sex steroids, so in females, more so estrogen, progesterone, they're more of, okay, let's recover and let's adapt to the stresses. And these kind of work on like a seesaw. If the cortisol is going up, our sex steroids are going right down uh, and vice versa. Not exactly like it's obviously a bit more complicated than that, uh, but essentially poor libido, sexual dysfunction, um, lack of motivation, drive, all that kind of stuff. Definitely signs of overtraining and a potential indicator that you may be overdoing it a little bit. Obviously, in context of all these things, uh, it can be transient if you're overreaching a little bit with a plan to recover and adapt. That's one thing. But if you're chronically in this state of, you know, I've got no sex drive, etc., that can be a sign of overtraining for sure. Uh, and the fifth one, which is an easily objective, objectable, um, uh, objective, I should say, measure of overtraining is a high resting heart rate chronically. If you are sitting 5, 10 beats a minute plus above your normal resting heart rate, this in fact can, you know, as many people know, a sign of overtraining. But what's interesting is that not a lot of people monitor this. And I don't always advocate for people to be excessive about these like parameters in terms of tracking sleep and tracking heart rate and tracking calories and, and because it can lead to an obsessive thought uh, mentality whereby you just care so much about that stuff. Whereas like if one night you don't have good sleep or you don't get the hours you think you should have, then in your head, it can kind of ruin the day. It depends on your personality. But I think that tracking heart rate, particularly during training, um, can be definitely beneficial if it's not going to lead to, you know, those kind of excessive thought patterns because a higher resting heart rate over a few days, not just one day, but over a few days and weeks, of course, can be a sign of overtraining and a sign that you need to back it up, uh, back it off a little bit. So all of these things, I think, are easy to or easy enough to kind of monitor. And you really should be not thinking about them excessively, but just thinking, oh, am I sleeping a lot poorer than I was? Am I getting a bit sicker? Um, do I have a reduced libido? I'm not as motivated. My resting heart rate's a bit up. Hmm. Sign to back off the training, sign to, you know, step it down a notch and just let the body recover. Because at the end of the day, picking up on these things early means that you can address them quickly and you don't dig yourself into a hole whereby they become so chronic and so deep and you become so embedded down that, you know, hole of overtraining that it's really hard to get back up. And the last thing you want to be doing when you are in a big training block or have racing coming up is having to step back and, I don't know, take a month of training because you've ruined your system so much. So looking at these things as a sign of overtraining, not so much in the extreme context, but just being aware of them and being in tune with your body, I think can be highly beneficial for any athlete, particularly endurance athletes. Uh, and it's also a reason why I'm a big proponent of blood testing. Having a blood test, if it's accessible and available and feasible financially for you to do at the start of a training block during and maybe after just to get a feel of okay what's going on with my hormones are uh, my anabolic hormones so testosterone estrogen progesterone going down too much is my cortisol morning am morning cortisol going up is vitamin d becoming deficient very important for recovery how's my iron my ferritin what's going on with my hematocrit you can just really objectively measure these things with a blood test um, and they can often kind of, I guess, show you trends before you start to have that symptomology coming on. But nonetheless, just being in tune with your body and being aware of at least these five things, I think is pretty like easy enough to do and can really give you a sense of if you're overdoing it. And if you are backing it off for a week, may it be all that you need, eating a little bit more food, doing a little bit less volume, a little bit less intensity for, for the week, and then you can probably get back into it. When these things become chronic and deeply embedded and you just can't get out of bed and you've got no motivation, 
then it's an issue. So being aware of it before it gets to that point, highly important. Hopefully that was uh, somewhat helpful for uh, some people. Leave a comment with any questions and I will see you in the next video.